Okay, my name is William Mitchell, Project Director for the ACT Initiative, which is a conflict transformation program that originated here in the Shangle Road with former combatants from within the Loyalist community, mostly aligned to the Ulster Volunteer Force. Today, for those of you that don't know, is what has been referred to historically as British Empire Day. Uh, unfortunately, or sadly, that is in the May, so we no longer celebrate British Empire Day for probably obvious reasons. Historically, it has evolved in the Commonwealth Day, and then latterly, to celebrate the Queen's official birthday, moved to her day in June. But it's still regarded in some respects uh, as originally being Queen Victoria's birthday and having the obvious link to the First World War. The poignancy is that while the day is in the maze, those that gave their sacrifice at the First World War hopefully are not. Historically, particularly in communities like this, we are drawn to commemorate those that we have a direct connection to, and by that what I mean usually conventionally the 36th Ulster Division and the 10th and 16th Irish. However, we have embarked on a program with an act that you'll hear more about from Professor John Brewer in trying to commemorate those less often remembered categories of people and nations that did pay the ultimate sacrifice themselves. Uh, rather than steal the thunder of our two key speakers who are in cement on the program, I'll first of all hand over to Professor John Brewer from the Mitchell Institute at Queen's University and then to Philip Orr, the well-known local historian. Thank you. Thank you very much, William. Uh, it really is a privilege to be here uh, because I feel uh, very personally associated with this. Uh, I had a great uncle who was killed in the last six weeks of the First World War. Uh, my father was named after him uh, when he served, and he served also in the same regiment as him in the Second World War. My brother is named after him and I'm very proud to say that my grandson is named after him. So there's been a Charles Brewer in every generation and we honour uh, that uh, great uncle's sacrifice. And so when the Mitchell Institute was asked to be involved in this project, I was very enthusiastic. The project originated with a London-based think tank called British Future that uses the lens of the First World War to help young British Muslims understand what Muslim identity can mean for them today and particularly how uh, Britain's Muslim uh, community has been associated with events that are truly foundational to the British national narrative. And they were interested in coming over to Northern Ireland to see how uh, the lens of the First World War can be used also to address loyalist identity today and of course the identity of local Muslims in Northern Ireland. And so the Mitchell Institute got involved in putting on a workshop first of all with local Muslims and then with local loyalists and then bringing them together so that they could share something of what um, uh, the First World War means to loyalists and Muslims could understand how they, they too are associated with the honour and sacrifice that we commemorate when we honour first, the First World War. And it was not anticipated that a wall mural would be painted. But if you could have seen the dynamics between the two groups on that night when we brought them together, you will appreciate how both groups wanted to do something that might cement a greater awareness and a greater understanding 
between the two communities and this wall mural I hope will stand as a permanent testimony to the beginnings of a new understanding and a new relationship um, between local Muslims and uh, local loyalists and so uh, the Mitchell Institute is very proud to be at this launch and we uh, wish uh, act well in um, um, the development and launch of this war mural because it does speak testimony I think not only to today but went right back to 1914 1918 so um, um, uh, I welcome you here and on behalf of Queen's University and the Mitchell Institute I welcome this war mural and having said more words than I intended I'll now hand you over to um, uh, Philip Orr Okay, thank you very much, John, and thanks, uh, William. And really, I just don't want to say too much, but maybe just to bring a little bit of history into uh, the proceedings um, this day. When I began uh, to be, I uh, suppose, a military historian, I really began on these streets of the Shankill, uh, interviewed some of my very first veterans back in the 1980s, and became very aware of just how many homes, indeed on both sides uh, of uh, the, the gate down there, both Falls and Shanko, uh, how many lives were affected, how many homes were broken uh, when news came through from the sufferings and the sacrifice on the battlefields of the Western Front. But what I also um, have become highly aware of, and I think is a great benefit to us all, is just how massive an event the war actually was. When I was out in Bangladesh at a conference, I discovered there that many, many people had uh, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents who had taken part in the war. I discovered that well over a million Indians had, because Bangladesh at that time was part of India, over a million Indians had participated in the war and they came from every kind of imaginable background in, in that huge and diverse country Sikhs, Hindu, a Muslim and many other faiths but it's not just a story um, of India though that is incredibly important it's a story that spans the world many of us are very aware and some of us have actually visited Gallipoli where um, again in a horrendous battle in 1915 um, there were troops from widely across the British and French empires uh, taking part and the Ottoman Empire as well of course which was soon to disappear in 19 uh, just shortly after the First World War but from Canada from Newfoundland from the West Indies from Nigeria as I already mentioned from South Asia from Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia and many other parts of the world uh, men came in order to uh, take part in that, uh, in that war and I think it's of great benefit to us to recognize just how diverse, how huge an event it actually was. Uh, just to um, conclude what I want to do is look a little bit with you at the, at the mural itself. Obviously you will recognize the role of a recruitment poster in the middle of the mural and of course recruitment posters all across uh, the different empires would have had different themes and different stories. Um, you may look up here in the top left and see soldiers from the West Indies Regiment uh, who amongst us knew about that story or you know knew anything at all about comparable stories. You will see perhaps a slightly more familiar face there in a Gurkha hat uh, coming from the area we now know as Nepal and of course a very famous example of the sepoy, sepoy is a, a word for an Indian soldier um, who received the Victoria Cross uh, and you can scrutinize those at your leisure. Also down in the left we have here a Sikh uh, f fighter, actually a Sikh who's actually involved uh, with the, um, the Royal Flying Corps and of course with an irony uh, and a meaning that perhaps never intended 
when the photograph was taken or it was chosen for the mural you'll see the word Manchester actually mentioned on that mural a little reminder to us of the pressing importance in our world today of finding ways to deal with peace and justice with the many conflicts that are there and we think of those who um, suffered just um, a couple of days ago and our hearts break over on the uh, far side of the mural you'll see again the familiar stories perhaps to many of Canada New Zealand Newfoundland I'm glad to see also at the bottom um, another group that very often gets left out of the picture women uh, women as nurses you'll see uh, um, an example there uh, and, and a couple of examples in fact so just a, a little summing up to say that um, we know that Belfast was hit very very badly by the uh, casualties of the First World War and that many went and showed great courage in that context but we also uh, are opening our minds just a little bit today and permanently as John said through this mural to the fact that we have many many um, other aspects to the war to think about and it does include very often those who are uh, more recent um, visitors to our shores who are more recent citizens of our country as well as those of us who um, trace our ancestry back here uh, in the longer term. So um, that's all from me and over to William. Thank you Philip. Okay folks, we'll not keep you too much longer, I'm just going to conclude by uh, saying something about the process, so we haven't spoken in any great detail, but both sets of uh, communities did what you'd refer to as a single identity workshop and then came together on a joint one, and it's fair to say it was very enlightening to both of us, especially about our own background and our own history of the war, and one of, one of the most poignant things that I learned uh, from a loyalist perspective, but also from a Muslim, was at the Battle of Somme, the only cavalry charge was uh, carried out by the 20th Dagon Horse Brigade. Uh, and this was quite enlightening to both groups because, as Philip had pointed out, is it's probably fair to say that Muslims then died side by side with those within the 36th Ulster Division and the 10th and 16th Aries. So last but not least, I just need to thank some people. So first of all, I'd like to thank Professor John Brewer for setting up the project and for hosting us at, at Queen's University. I'd like also to thank Philip Orr, who has played a significant role and some experiences you've heard from him. But in their absence, I'd like to thank the two Muslim facilitators, Abiz and Yahan, who came from British First in London to travel to be with us on more than one occasion. And then lastly, local, locally camp here today is at university studying, but I'd like to thank Stephen Pollock, the coordinator of the ACT initiative here in the Shankill, and those ACT volunteers that participated in the program. And then last but not least, we can't get away with this, although I'm not sure there's any of them here, but we'd like to thank the housing executive for their expediency and actually paying for the mural because from the workshops what emerged was the ACT participants that took part immediately designed this mural and we were able to apply the housing executive to fund it. So on behalf of ACT initiative again, thank you all for turning out today and feel free to convene now at our office in the corner of Northumberland Street.